What is up everybody? How is it going? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to World of Tanks. Today I am going to make my first Crash Review episode and I'm going to start with American Tanks. Now in my previous uh, my grinding tank list episode I asked from you if you would like to see something like that. I received super positive feedback. Thank you for that of course. And uh, here is my first episode. So let's start with American Nation and uh, today's episode is going to be only about American tanks in my garage. Uh, for bigger nations like for Soviet uh, tanks, uh, for French tanks, for American tanks, I am going to make separate episode for those nations but uh, for smaller ones like um, Italian tanks in my garage, uh, Polish tanks or Czech tanks, I am going to put all those nations together into one episode so just to keep them packed but I do not want to make like American tanks and Soviet tanks in one episode otherwise it simply would be like uh, around one hour long episode and nobody wants to watch me for one hour straight so what we are going to do is uh, let's go over them one by one quick my quick review my quick opinion about uh, every single tank in my garage why they are here and what I think about those tanks so let's get going I have a couple primary vehicles, T49, Super Pershing, T34, I do not even know why they are my primary tanks over here, but uh, well, let's start uh, from the left side. So T49, one of my favorite tier 9 light tanks, and I can even say one of the best tier 9 light tank, if not the best at the moment. Not with Turb Cannon. Okay, Turb Cannon can be extremely fun, extremely awesome, rewarding and stuff like that, but uh, uh, battles, damage wise at least with turb cannon are super inconsistent the best gun of course is 90 mm that has really really awesome stats close to 3000 dpm is always nice so d49 only good words to say about that and i really do recommend it the gun handling is awesome minus 10 degrees of gun depression the mobility is awesome view range is just crazy good i have i only have situational awareness and recon at 50 percent together with coated optics and food close to 500 meters view range. Uh, I moved my good crew into XM551 Sheridan when I bought that. Next up we have the 26 e 4 Super Pershing, one of the tier 8 preferential matchmaking premium medium tanks. And luckily Wargaming announced in their latest the fixing preferential premium tanks article that they are going to buff its mobility, so specific power if I remember was raised to around 12 horsepower per ton or or maybe even a bit more i do not remember exactly but mobility is going to be buffed and this is exactly what this vehicle needs to be a bit better a bit more pleasant to play with but uh, all in all i have to say i actually quite enjoy it especially in nowadays world of tanks in 357 matchmaking and moving on d34 one of the oldest tier 8 premium heavy tanks uh, this heavy tank tank is one of those heavy tanks that players were able to get completely for free. Uh, back in the days when this vehicle was tier 9 heavy tank, yes it was actually tier 9 standard American heavy tank before T30, that is tier 9 tank destroyer now, but T30 back in the days was tier 10 heavy tank with the same gun, 750 alpha damage gun, which was quite amazing. And every single player who had T34 as a standard tier 9 heavy tank before M103 and T110E5 were introduced to the game got this tank for free which was really awesome thing to do by Wargaming I think they haven't done that after that uh, yeah, for FE-405 I remember we had to complete a uh, couple missions and, and stuff like that. Uh, but D-34, I haven't played with D-34 for a very long time. In my opinion, uh, for my playstyle it is uh, way too slow. It had really good gun, gun is the best thing about it. It has good penetration, 248 penetration, 400 alpha damage. When this gun handles 400 alpha damage, 248 millimeters of penetration equals many credits in your pocket. 
So D34. Not uh, my first pick, but still pretty decent. Next up, D1 Gunningham. This tank is over here simply because sometimes you want to troll me, you want to see me playing with tier 1s. There is nothing else to say about that. Next up, we have D1 E6, tier 2 premium light tank from USA. I do not know what it is, I do not even know how it got over here. It has to be some kind of a reward slash gift slash bonus go tank. I would never buy tier 2 light tanks myself, premium light tanks, for real money, because in my eyes there is uh, really no use for those tanks besides boosting your WN8 aka E penis. Maybe maybe you know more about this vehicle. I have played a couple battles but I do not remember anything about it. Next up we have another tier 2 premium light tank, T2 light tank. They really didn't bother naming it so well in my opinion, T2 light tank, okay. Uh, but I remember one thing about this beast, it had really awesome mobility, didn't it? Yes, 72 top speed moving forward, 20 moving backwards, and all the rest of the things um, are kind of average, I would say so, but speed, 72 with 34.4 power to weight ratio. View range, nothing special, maybe it had good view range, but it actually didn't, so yeah, I don't know, tier 2 light tank, nothing too crazy. M22 Locust, one of the cutest tanks in this game, in my opinion. Not as cute as Lux, but still really awesome. And I, oh, I actually remember, maybe I did buy this one with the one gold package. Yeah, actually, this is, this may be one of those uh, low tier premium tanks that I did actually buy back in the days. Like, I was able to get 2.5k gold plus this vehicle. Maybe I did something like that, but once again, mobility is really good, 64, top speed, and all the rest of the things are average at the best. TPM is actually lower than on, yeah, TPM is actually lower than on T2. But next up, we have MTLS 1G14. I believe this is our latest or one of the latest uh, gift tanks or reward vehicles. We simply had to play 100 battles and you had to be in the top 10 by experience earned, if I remember correctly. And you were able to get this vehicle for free. Now, the special thing about this tank is that both guns, both frontal guns, they actually fire. So this is kind of kind of tank and kind of fire. Next up, M24 Jaffa, that has been in the game for a very long time, it has seen different times, it has been really beast, it has been average, it has been bad, yeah, it has seen everything. Now, I don't know, at the moment it is kinda meh, somehow I have even one mark of excellence, even though I do not remember playing any battles with it lately, so I do not even know how I got it. And uh, all in all, on USA vehicles you do not see too many marks, uh, simply because I am not playing with the USA tanks. All my focus at the moment goes towards uh, grinding out new stuff, because I simply have so many uh, different tanks, uh, different tank lines to grind with, uh, so... When I am done grinding, then I can focus on marking my favorite tanks. But uh, is Jaffa going to be one of them? Mm, no, I don't think so. Maybe back in the days, not at the moment. Next up, however, we have one really good tier 7 light tank, D71DA. I simply love this gun. 18.36 second reload time for the full magazine, 2 second reload time between every single shot, 150 alpha damage. Yes, this is not the best, but uh, still, you have 6 shells in the magazine. This gun is awesome, mobility is awesome, view range is really good as well, 466 with my crew and loadout and I only have a situational awareness at 54% so I am able to boost my view range even more with the situational awareness. I think that gives me extra 6 meters when I get it up to 100% plus uh, recon skill as well on the top of that. So. Mobility, good gun, is good, I love the gun. 
this this tank is the shit really i love it i recommend tier 7 d71 da but m41 bulldog when it was tier 7 it was a lot better in my opinion now when it can see tier 10s it can be in 357 matchmaking i would say it is not as good it is it is simply a shadow what it used to be it, this is just my opinion of course maybe you enjoy it even more when it is tier 8 but me personally nope 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 in tier 7 with the auto loading gun that it had it was crazy it was really amazing and many other players think the same after they removed its auto loading gun it is not the same anymore next up i have one rental period ended vehicle t92 tier 8 premium light tank from usa a wargaming uh, rented this tank for us for a preview episodes for a couple days after this period was over i am not able to play with it anymore and i do not have it uh, but d92 the best thing about this tank is the mobility and camo and view range combination it is really exceptional scout but the firepower is super lacking gun handling yes it is awesome minus 10 degrees of gun depression aiming time is good accuracy is okay uh, but you have to work so hard for your damage 150 alpha damage 175 millimeters of penetration and this tank can see tier 10s so to get decent damage games you have to work your ass off and the sickest thing about this gun is actually premium ammunition 210 of penetration you are not going to get crazy penetration but 5600 credits for 150 alpha damage unreal really this shell cost is simply unreal it has to be like maximum 3000 per pop then it would be worth it but moving on, next up we have our first tier 10 vehicle, another light tank, XM551 Sheridan. This is the shit, this tank is the beast. I really enjoy it. I love this 105mm gun, lightweight gun, 390 alpha damage, 236 penetration. This gun handling is awesome. As you can see, 1.50, 3 second aiming time. Accuracy is not the best, but minus 10 degrees of gun depression, over 3000 dpm. I love it. It has the turbo option as well and exactly the same can be said about sheridan as i said about d49 yes it has turb cannon but uh, damage wise it is not super consistent the best gun of course is 105 millimeter gun but if you get tired of it uh, there is another option at least the fun option so let's say this is uh, like um, your wn8 option this is fun option of course but all in all only good words can be said about sheridan i like it i like it a lot and next up we have tier 5 m4 sherman with turb cannon of course this is my fun go-to vehicle whenever i feel like i i want to play me tears with the usa medium tanks this is the vehicle i am going to jump into with turb cannon of course to see those 300 plus damage penetrations why the hell not 53 millimeters of penetration when it is top tier in 357 to penetrate tier 3 vehicles tier 4 vehicles maybe sometimes even tier tier 5 or tier 6 vehicles feels so freaking rewarding this is my my go to fun turp tank one of my go to fun turp tanks next up we have ram 2 aka captain canada tier 5 medium tank with tier 4 gun this gun is actually quite pathetic 75 alpha damage 105 millimeters of penetration with premium rounds 170 which is kind of nice and no h rounds and yeah i don't know man minus 7.5 degrees of gun depression gun handling accuracy is quite awful so overall it is kind of special tier 5 premium medium tank but at the same time not so special with anything else view range is also quite bad yeah sad makes me sad but moving on into m4a3 e8 also known as easy 8 oh boy we go way back this tank was actually in my first episode ever about world of tanks that i uploaded to my youtube channel where i died in the first two minutes uh, because arty killed me i think hummel killed me or something like that <laughs> but uh, back in the days six years ago around six years ago this was actually my number one favorite tank 
I simply loved the gun. I loved this fast firing gun. Gun handling, once again, kind of meh, but uh, this uh, reload time, you can easily boost it under 3 seconds. And this was amazing. This was really amazing. Mobility is also decent. 17.2 specific power, 48 top speed, 18 reverse speed. Mobility is decent. Armor, well, you do not have any armor, especially nowadays World of Tanks. But um, for some reason, this tank simply fitted with my playstyle and I loved it to bits. And, and I love it. I am never going to sell it simply because it was in my first episode ever. It was my first battle ever on my YouTube channel. And next up, another Sherman, this time Jumbo. We have a lot of Shermans over here. M4 Sherman is 8, Jumbo and Fury as well. They are all really good tier 6 medium tanks. Average is the best word to use over here. Is the keyword to describe the entire USA Tech 3 as well. I think this is what Wargaming went for as well when they released USA Tech 3. USA was supposed to be average at everything. Not exceptionally good or not exceptionally bad at anything. Just average, in the middle. German were good snipers, uh, and the Soviet tanks had good alpha damage, good armor, and the USA was exactly in the middle, because originally we only had three nations, we had German tanks, we had Soviet tanks, and USA vehicles in this game. Now we have 11 nations in total, I think so. But moving on, D20 tier 7 medium tank, lightly, super lightly armored, you have no armor whatsoever, your gun is 240 alpha damage, 160 penetration versus tier 9s, this is not good enough, you need to load in some premium rounds as well, with 243 millimeters of penetration, quite a big difference, 83 millimeters extra penetration. Hit the two button and win, but you do not have any armor whatsoever, mobility is key over there together with view range, so boost your good stats. In my opinion, this tank kinda doesn't fit into the deck tree. To move from EZ8 into D20 feels kinda weird, and to move from D20 into Pershing also feels kinda weird. And by the way, Pershing is one of those tier 8 vehicles that I did sell back in the days. And not because it was bad, but because I needed money for another tier 10 vehicle. And I haven't. I haven't been able to buy it back, but uh, M26 Pershing is also really, really good tier 8 medium tank, a standard medium tank. It actually can be one of the best. It is, uh, M26 Pershing is a lot of players' favorite tier 8 standard medium tank. Next up we have Eagle 7, this is our latest premium tank in this game. I made one episode about it already, in my opinion it is not worth the money, it is overpriced and why should I pick Eagle 7 over D26 E4 Super Brushing when both vehicles can see only up to tier 9 tanks. Yeah, this is my quick review about it once again. I am not going to spend too much time even playing with it, because if I want to make credits, I have so many other uh, tier 8 premium tanks uh, to grind with. Uh, for example, M46 Patton KR. Now, this is like mini Pershing that makes you more credits. It has cool camo as well, iconic camo that you cannot uh, deactivate or demount. You cannot use it anywhere else. Some kind of special vehicle, but... Uh, not the best for nowadays tier 8 battles. It can see tier 10s and it really doesn't like to see tier 10s. In favorable matchmaking it makes good credits, but when matchmaking is against you, it is bad. It is really bad. The D25 Pilot 1, for example, is a lot better. And in my opinion, even Super Perching is a lot better. Or a lot better all arounder and uh, credit maker. And moving on, M46 Patton, one of my favorite tier 9 medium tanks in this game, after they buffed its uh, turret, it is amazing, I love it, I really do love M46 Patton, I am not playing with it super often, but uh, when I do, I enjoy it, living hell out of it. It has really good gun, 390 alpha damage, 218 penetration, minus 10 degrees of condepression, aiming time is good, uh, accuracy is kinda mech, but over 3000 dpm, armor, uh, turret is a lot better than it used to be, so it actually has some hull down capabilities now. Uh, but hull armor, uh, not the best. The turret is good, mobility is average at the best. View range is awesome. Stock view range 410 meters. This is crazy. M46 
Bridge Baton. Really, really good tier 9 medium tank. I cannot recommend this enough. But same cannot be said about T54E1. Wargaming, you either have to buff its penetration a lot or its gun handling. It is not fun to miss or bounce 50% of your shots with every single clip. Aiming time. 2.72 second aiming time. This is freaking heavy tank aiming time. Accuracy. 0 0.38. Penetration 2.10. Okay, decent penetration actually, but it needs to be buffed. Because with this aiming time, with this accuracy, you cannot snipe at weak spots and you miss or you bounce freaking 50% of your shots with every single clip. Armor is not the best, of course, uh, turret easily penetrable by every single tier 8 even, easily penetrable mobility, quite decent, hull traverse is really good actually, view range once again, let's see, 400 meters, okay, not as good as on M46 pattern, but still really good, but firepower needs to be looked at, and after that I am going to play with it one once again. But next up, let's talk about another really awesome tank in the American Tech Tree, M48A5 Baton. This is, this is the beast. It actually, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure, I like many vehicles, but this can be my favorite medium tank in this game at the moment. Most definitely, it is in the top 3. I love it a bit. I do not play with it uh, too often for the same reasons I mentioned before. I have so many other stuff to grind with. Uh, but uh, every once in a while when I jump into it, I freaking enjoy it. I love the gun, I, I love the armor, hull down armor is crazy, minus 10 degrees of gun depression, good accuracy, good aiming time, good DPM, good penetration, 390 alpha damage, I freaking love this thing, I cannot say anything bad about it. Mobility is kind of balancing, uh, 45 is not the fastest, but once again this gun is amazing, hull down armor is amazing, we View range is amazing, 420 meter view range. I love my M48 pattern. Next up, T14. This is actually my first ever premium vehicle that I purchased in this game seven years ago. This is the first one. But sadly, this vehicle in my garage at the moment is not the original T14, because I didn't enjoy it seven years ago, I kinda hated it, and I actually sold it. But I had to buy it back, because it is kinda historical. We go way back, as I said, my first ever premium tank that I bought in this game, T14. Not much more to say about it, it, it doesn't shine with anything else in my opinion. Okay, DPM is actually pretty good, but accuracy, not that good, penetration, not that good, alpha damage, not that good. Reload time, although, is pretty sexy. I don't know, maybe some, some enjoy it, I, I don't get a hard one. Next up, D29, one of the best, if not the best tier 7 heavy tanks in this game. It is really solid, it has good gun, it has good armor, it has decent mobility, it has extremely good turret, get it hull down, and even in tier 9 battles, tier 9 vehicles may struggle fighting with you. I think enough said, really really good tier 7 heavy tank. Yeah. Same can be kind of said about T32. It is good only in right situations. The worst thing about T32 is that it is a tier 8 vehicle and it can see tier 9 tanks. T29 and T32, guess what? They use exactly the same gun. Yes, T29 stop gun is exactly the same gun as on T32, sadly, and this is T32 stop gun. I don't know, it needs some penetration upgrades, uh, 180, uh, 198 millimeters of penetration in tier 8, in nowadays tier 8, is complete and utter garbage. But turret on D32 is more like on tier 9 or on tier 10 vehicles, it is really good, so all the rest of the stats besides the penetration on D32 are good, and I enjoy it. Next up, the most controversial vehicle in this game, Chrysler KGF, tier 8 premium heavy tank. 
this uh, stirred up the biggest shitstorm ever in the history of World of Tanks, the biggest drama ever, and by the way, it uses exactly the same gun as the 32, only it is a premium tank. So you can easily spam premium ammunition in this vehicle, and I think you can actually make uh, credits or you can actually make profit if you penetrate every single shot. 4800 credits per pop. And now compare this premium round to T92's premium round. 210 penetration with heat and 5600 credits. 150 alpha damage. That is crazy. But this tank, the best thing about it is the frontal armor, of course. And the worst thing about it is the gun. Next up I have two exactly the same vehicles, the T26E5 and Patriot, one of the best tier 8 premium heavy tanks, not much more to say about that. Good DPM, good aiming time, good accuracy, good penetration, 230 penetration on a tier 8 premium tank. Compare it to the T32 now guys, come on, come on Wargaming, what the fuck are you doing? A really good tier 8 premium heavy tank, one of the best, if, uh, if not the best. M103. The best thing about this tank is the gun, and this is the only good thing about M103, in my opinion. Uh, good penetration, good alpha damage, good gun depression, aiming time, accuracy is also decent, DPM is also pretty good, but survivability on paper it seems to be pretty good, frontally at least, but don't let it fool you. It is not actually as good as it seems. It has many weak spots, uh, side armor, 44 millimeters thick side armor. What the hell is this? Artillery loves this tank. Uh, simply do you even splash it and you deal a lot of damage. Mobility average and all the rest of the things are kind of average or under it even. So the only good thing about M103 is the gun. But the D110E5 next up we are talking about the legendary T110E5, old golden boy, as I like to call it, because back in the days, guys, this tank was the best tank in this game. Like, number one best vehicle compared to the any tanks in this game. For about a year, I can say six months to a year, it was the best vehicle in this game. But after that, Wargaming uh, decided to nerf it a bit. They decided to nerf it a lot, actually. They released the tier 10 medium tanks, the tier 10 tank destroyers. They released the new heavy tanks with a lot better armor, with a lot better guns. And after that, they released the Super Conqueror as well. And this was the final nail into the coffin, into the T110E5's coffin. And uh, this tank was done. Now it is completely forgotten. Just compare E5 to the Super uh, Conqueror and uh, what do you see? Nothing. I cannot say that it is only a shadow of what it used to be, but it is super close to it. And I am kinda sad, because I enjoyed E5. Not when it was OP, because uh, everyone enjoyed E5, because it fitted with chair playstyle, as always, <laughs> when something is overpowered. But after they nerfed it, and after it was balanced, I still enjoyed it a lot, but now... I don't know why I should play with it over Super Conqueror or over many other tier 10 heavy tanks, nowadays heavy tanks. Now D57 Heavy is a bit tricky one, it is one of the most aggressive auto-loading tanks in this game, because it actually has some armor. And this auto-loading gun is really awesome as well, 23.44 second reload time for the full magazine, 2 seconds between every single shot, and 4 rounds in the magazine, but the gun handling is not the best, it is actually known being super bad, but look at this TPM guys, auto-loading heavy tank with 3261 TPM. DPM. This is crazy. Let's return our crew members. DPM should be even better. Yes, over 3300. 258 penetration, minus 8 degrees of gun um, uh, depression, but aiming time not the best. Accuracy is okay, but once again, aiming time is uh, really bad. Aiming time is actually worse than the reload time between every single shot, so you have to look out for that. All in all, I can, I can say out of 100 points, 90. Yeah, it is that good. I like it a lot. D3 HMC. Derp. 
uh, Turp Troll vehicle just for my new vote I play episodes, not much more to say about it. Hellcat, one of the best, if not the best, tier 6 tank destroyers in this game. It has a turret, it has crazy mobility, 72 km per hour mobility, no armor and gun handling is super, super good. So one of the best tier 6 tank destroyers. D25A team is a tricky one, mobility is good, 56 moving forward, 18 power to weight ratio, Aiming time is good, accuracy is kinda meh, DPM is kinda meh, minus 10 degrees of gun depression is good, penetration 198 is okay in tier 7 battles. But it is a tricky one, I do not even know what to think about it. Is it good, is it bad, is it average? It is, in my opinion, it is average, or maybe slightly under average. M56 Scorpion Tier 7 Premium Tank Destroyer with crazy camo. Camo is the best thing about it, of course. 26.74 without my crew members. Let's see, what kind of crew do I have it? Okay, not so good enough camo crew, but still camo is awesome. Mobility is awesome. Gun is also good. 219 millimeters of penetration and look at his heat. 275 and once again 4000 credits. What the hell is going on with D92's Primo rounds? Blows my mind. But this one is a sneaky bastard, and being a sneaky bastard is the best way to play it. Hull armor is nice as well, by the way. As you can see, D28 concept, believe it or not, but I haven't played any battles at all. Not a single battle with my D28 HDC. It is one of the weirdest looking tier 7 tank destroyers in this game, or one of the weirdest looking tanks overall. It has good gun arc for a tank destroyer, like 30 degrees to the left and to the right, but I don't know. It is a reward vehicle, but I really haven't bothered setting it up for a battle. I haven't played any battles with it so far. Maybe today. We'll see. Next up, tier 8 D28. Oof, I remember that I loved it. For some reason, I was that weirdo who loved this vehicle. And I think it wasn't even as fast back in the days. Its mobility was buffed together with D95's mobility. But I don't know, I loved it. I like the gun, 120mm gun is amazing, uh, good penetration, good alpha damage, good DPM, aiming time, accuracy. D28. Frontal hull armor for a tier 8 vehicle is amazing. 254. Frontally, many times the only thing that people can penetrate are your commander hatches. But mobility, yes, you guessed it, super bad. 22 moving forward, 10 moving backwards. One of my all time favorite tank destroyers in this game. God damn, this tank looks sexy, it looks Beastie, it looks uh, from the back, it looks like Lamborghini, in my opinion. This is this is the most iconic vehicle, in my opinion. T92 Tomb Turtle. 750 alpha damage. This gun is devastating. This frontal armor is crazy good. 305 millimeters thick, and it actually works as well. You can penetrate the lower plate with the higher penetration gun, so you can go for the commander hatches. But T95, I love it. I loved it even when it had 13 kilometers per hour top speed. 13, 1 and 3 next to each other, not 30. And at the moment it has 20 km per hour top speed, so it is a lot better and it has better traverse speed as well. So Tomb Turtle, my, one of my favorite tank destroyers, because how iconic it is. D30 turreted tank destroyer, it used to be a tier 10 heavy tank, as I said at the start of my episode, and now tier 9 tank destroyer, it is decent, yeah, you need good map, you need good matchmaking uh, for this tank to work, in my opinion, but uh, gun is awesome, 750 alpha damage is always awesome, mobility decent, and it has a turret, so turreted tank destroyer. And uh, finally, two tier 10 American tank destroyers, E3 and E4. I'm kinda rushing because this episode is long enough already and I'm kinda running out of free disk space, so I have to be quick. Uh, this tank, the best thing about E3 is the armor. It doesn't have a turret, but this armor is uh, one of the best, if not the best, on any tank destroyer in this game. 
get this vehicle hull down and people need premium rounds to penetrate your commander hatch. To even penetrate your commander hatch. Yes, it is that good. On E4, your armor is not as good. It is actually far from being even good. Uh, commander hatch is quite big and easily penetrable. Your lower plate is easily penetrable, but you have a turret. And this is the biggest difference. E4 has a turret better mobility, less armor, E3 doesn't have a turret, weaker mobility and better armor and better gun handling and gun stats as well, because turret uh, is kind of taking away some gun handling, minus 6 degrees of gun depression, 2.6 second aiming time and accuracy 0.33 over here, better aiming time, minus 8 degrees of gun depression. So, ladies and gentlemen, whew, I am done and my throat is kinda hurting me because of all that talking. Those were all my American tanks in my garage. Now you know what I think about them, now you know why I have them. <clears throat> and as you can see, my, I am kinda losing my voice actually even. And my plans with American tanks, I do not know. Like, I have every single tier 10 American tank besides tier 10 artillery. Maybe eventually I am going to get T92 as well. I don't know. Not at the moment. I do not have T69. Maybe I can buy CMCD because I love DA. T25 slash 2. I actually do not even have a T28 prototype researched because I was able to get all those vehicles before they added those tanks into the game. Yeah, and I got my E4 through D30, which was moved from... I, I, don't, I don't remember what they did with this tech tree, but I do not have it. So this is how my American tech tree is looking like, and uh, this is how my garage looks like, filled with American tanks. But guys, now I have to stop recording. Sorry for taking so long time. I simply love to talk and I actually wanted to talk a lot more about every single tank. Uh, I catch you next time with something else. I don't know when I'm going to make my next Garage Review episode fairly soon. Stay tuned for that. Stay awesome. Stay, stay sexy. Take care and bye.